Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Uh, definitely a joyous one, as uh, today is April 14th, 2023, which means we are right on the cusp of spring break. Uh, everyone's been working hard, so uh, glad we get a little rest and relaxation coming up here, and hope you have that too. So again, happy spring break to you and yours, and hopefully you guys have some great plans and uh, get some rest and relaxation going. Um, starting off with our shout outs and recognitions, um, we this one goes out to all the folks involved with the planning and execution of the junior prom. My student had a great time. Thank you to all the students, faculty and staff that made this happen. Uh, so, yeah, again, we heard uh, lots of really good feedback. Um, again, our ASB kids, our, our junior class leaders um, in the faculty advisors and the faculty folks that run leadership and all the chaperones. Thank you very much for doing that. I also want to throw a shout out to Jackie Fala. Um, she is a bilingual aide. She um, is going to be leaving us this uh, in a little bit here. She's about to have baby number two. Um, she's a, also a Homestead graduate, so it's a little bittersweet that uh, we have had her here, and she's done a really great job, and she's moving on. Um, but just wanted to give her a shout out for the great work that she's done with our kids this year. Um, questions and concerns. We had one big sort of long one about Algebra 2, trig, the Algebra 2 trig class. Um, so I'm going to kind of try and I didn't put the whole question on here because it was pretty long. Um, so I'm just going to try and break it down and, and give some answers to it. So um, the question kind of centered around the, that this is a very difficult class and that people are, can struggle in it. And why aren't there honor? Why isn't it given honors credit? That kind of thing. So to just be clear, I, and this is considered an advanced class because it is two classes, algebra two and trigonometry put together. Um, and so the pacing, the, the subject, the rigor is definitely more rigorous than a um, just a straight Algebra two class. Um, it is not given honors credit, neither is our Geometry Enriched class, which is a similar, it's not, Geometry Enriched isn't a, you know, a two subjects in one, but it's a deeper dive into um, geometry. Uh, but it doesn't get an official recognition as honors. That's that's true across the district. It's a district decision. Uh, but our, the colleges do recognize that when they're looking at our, our students' applications. So they see that they've been taking advanced math classes and whether they're doing well or not. And again, a student who takes Algebra 2 trig, we get some kids who come in as freshmen and take it. We have some kids who don't take it till their senior year. But those kids who tend to take it earlier are usually on a path towards AP and want to keep moving more quickly. So they take that challenge and really they're more interested in the AP courses that are coming up. What will happen is your current teacher will make a recommendation based on your performance in the class prior to it. So geometry, geometry and rich and say, this is where I think you should go. Um, the parents then and student and family can have a discussion about where they really want their student to happen. If if for some reason they think, uh, you know, algebra two trig is gonna be too hard, they can say, no, I wanna try algebra two. If they are recommended algebra two, but they wanna go to algebra two trig, try and challenge themselves. That is a, pro there is a process to kind of make sure you're making the right decision. You can talk to counselors, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, definitely talking with your current teacher, talking with counselor to get more information about it is, is important because it is a it is a more challenging class. And, you know, one of the things that I need to sort of think about is the, you know, our, we call algebra and geometry our foundational classes and then algebra two on up are sort of advanced classes because that's where colleges expect you to be or the kind of college math you'd be taking in college. So again, just keep that in mind as you're going on. There were some other questions in there about, you know, can since this is a tough subject, could you be offering retakes or shortening the test so kids can get through them? Um, I can definitely pass that information along uh, to to the teachers. This is not something that myself as the administrator or as a principal can say, you have to give shorter tests, you have to give retakes. That is something that is in the purview of the teachers. Um, and again, they take a lot of that in consider consideration. Their course like teams make decisions. Um, based on those things. So, you know, there are opportunities to make up points or sometimes retake tests. Uh, but again, that is a decision that the, the teachers get to make, but I will pass that along. Um, this this one kind of comes up every so often too, saying, you know, I, we wanted to look at some of the, the tests to see how my kid was doing and, you know, maybe give them some help when they were struggling. Um, and so in Algebra 2, two Algebra 2 trig teachers are not letting the test go home. And a lot of times that's because a, a, a department or a course-like team puts you know puts together you know assessments and they share them and so they're trying to you know share them not only across the team but over a series of years to kind of get some data that they can look at and if we're handing back the tests kind of ruins the validity of the test because then the test gets out there and people can see it and they can start to study to it so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen um but again parents and students can ask to schedule some time to go over the test in class, you know, in the classroom with the teacher present. I know that's a little bit less convenient, but that is something that you can do. Kids can schedule some time with the teacher to kind of go through it. And then, um, you know, parents, if you want to go do it too, that's something that you would need to arrange with the teacher. But 
that has happened and, and what's something that we facilitate if needed. Um, there was a question about maybe there should be a placement test for this class since it is such a difficult class. Um, we don't do placement tests for any of our math classes. Um, that, that's kind of a, a gatekeeper and that's not something that we are doing. You know, again, we you do have the right to choose which class you want your student to go into with the right amount of information, right amount of support. Um, and so, again, we, we would prefer that you have a conversation and, and kind of talk it through with either your teacher or counselor. Um, or the department lead uh, rather than just take a test because sometimes, you know, test doesn't mean that you're going to do well in the class. It just might mean you have enough information at that point to, to go into the class. Um, but, you know, again, it's it's one of those things we don't we don't do placement tests for math classes. So that was the only question we had. Um, and again, it was a long one. So that's why I went through that. But there are a few other announcements. Just wanted to remind you that, yes, campus is closed, although there'll be some practices and that kind of stuff going on. There is construction still happening on campus. Um, the uh, the big thing is that the horseshoe is going to be closed during the break, not that you're going to need to be in there, um, but just in case you are coming to campus to drop off or pick up a kid, please know that the horseshoe will be closed. Uh, they're doing some underground work there that they started last break, had to stop and cover up while they you know, we came back for school. Now they're going to finish it this week and then it will open up back after the break. So the horseshoe is just closed for the spring break. Um, there have been some storage containers uh, that were, are being brought into the staff lot to start working with our science building um, uh, modernization project. So again, the parking and traffic is gonna get even a little bit more crazy in there. So again, another good reason to stay out of the staff lot. Um, and no matter, we, it's gotten a little bit better there, but people are still kind of ignoring our things and, and doing some silly maneuvers to get in and out of the uh, staff lot. So we please ask that you stay out uh, and make sure that you're staying safe and keeping others safe. I uh, wanted to put a plug in for the district art show. Um, this is the flyer that is was designed and uh, it's going to be happening in the month of May at the district office. Uh, the May 8th is the opening reception. So even though it'll have been open for a week, that's kind of a fun event to go to. But this includes artwork from all our, our, our different high schools in our district. Uh, so it's usually kind of neat to see is the talent of not only our students, but our art teachers. Um, so please, get, if you get a chance, uh, come check that out in the great hall of the district office. Uh, brings us to some important dates. So again, we'll be gone for a week, but then when we come back, there is an advisory that's happening uh, put on by our Jewish Student Union. Uh, and then we have a spring study land event. Uh, the first one for the spring, there'll be another one in May, uh, but it's a chance for students to come and get a spot to study in a night and get some resources. Uh, we did one in winter. It was really successful, so we're trying another one. Uh, again, we've talked about this one before, but the town hall with board members for students is on the 28th AP exam starting that week of first two weeks of May. Um, I mentioned the art show. Uh, I, I mentioned I, I put 13 there, 513 in red because I actually gave you the wrong date last time. So our 60th anniversary event is on the 13th. Thank you to the parent who pointed that out. Um, so that means I'm glad someone's reading it closely and <laughs> checking my work. Um, then there's uh, the senior prom coming up. And then I put in green here some of the senior awards, uh, celebrations that are coming up. Uh, it may seem like it's far away, but that's seven, six or seven weeks away. So uh, getting your dates on the calendar, making sure you're making plans. Uh, senior award show is where we give out uh, awards and you know cords and scholarships and that stuff to students. So there'll be invitations going out to that. Uh, the senior celebration is for all seniors um, and for their parents. It's a more intimate gathering before graduation. It's lots of student performances and speeches. It's kind of a fun thing. You get to wear your cap and gown. Um, and again, it's in the, held in the field house. We don't have room to bring the entire family. But again, if mom and dad want to come and, and you get there, you're welcome to do so. And then graduation, obviously, is on the 8th, which is also the last day of school. So that's all coming up. Um, again, a short one here before we head out into the break. So I just want to wish you all a great restful break. Hope you have some good plans. Uh, and whatever you do, hope you find some relaxation and some joy. Uh, take care. And we'll see you in uh, two weeks when I do my next, next uh, video message after the break. Take care.